Say, I have. I have. It's mine. I have. You can even go next and say, I am have. Say, I have. Everlasting life. Now go on. I shall not come unto condemnation. There will never be a day he will be condemned. But it's passed from death to life. Praise God. Are you there? All right, good. So, this is the day of salvation. The glory cloud is here. The power of our God. Says when you know it, you are filled with the fullness of God. How God anointed Jesus of now? It is a Jesus Christ because he wasn't the Christ until he was anointed. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Mighty manifestations, these are seasons of glorious manifestations. These are times of mighty manifestations of the glory of the Lord. are watching the living word telecast and i had some folks you know he said, hurricane katrina happened in Utah, Utah, salt lake city in america and he said because people were worshiping idols god was looking at this you are comparing me to shango ah! say jesus look at what that just said Temper. I will react without talking to you. You are saying the Holy Spirit is just moving. He doesn't talk much. All of a sudden, the father without telling you just goes there. Katrina. Wait. And destroy everybody. See, it's their sins that made them have hurricane. That's some serious level of spiritual illiteracy. Even a man under the law said, if the Lord will mark iniquity. Say, woo. See, you know Isaiah was talking to Israel. He said, woe unto you, woe unto you. And he was saying, prophesying, he said, the Lord's hand is not short. I should say it. When he got to Jesus, he said, he bore our <laughs> so you are one of us. <laughs> he said, he bore our, he said, all we like sheep. That's the prophet too. All we like sheep have gone astray. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's punishing no one for sins. That's a false gospel. Second Corinthians 5. Have you been there before? Have you checked it before? Are you sure you've read it before? God was in Christ. Who did the reconciliation? We, know we didn't come to him, he came. Amen. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself and not imputing their trespasses again under them. That's what God did. I call it the charter of the gospel. <laughs> A book is coming out this year. I the charter of the gospel. What makes it the gospel is that God is not counting sins against people. That is why it is good news. That's what he's done. So, listen now. This is the year of favor. This is the year of favor. Jesus doesn't talk about the vengeance. Praise God. Watch this now. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Are you catching this? Hallelujah. 
For he saith, verse 2, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2, I have heard thee in a time accepted. See that? I have heard thee in a time accepted. In the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. This is not the day of vengeance. The day of vengeance is going to come. But listen, Peter, quoting from Joel, said the day of salvation will come before the day of vengeance. It's when the day of salvation is over, they will have the day of vengeance. They don't run side by side. That is why we're sent to preach the gospel to every creature while we are in the day of salvation. And whosoever, anywhere, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why? We are in the day of salvation. Where nobody's sins will be counted against him. He just needs to call upon the name of the Lord and he will be saved. There was one drama I watched years ago. Be careful of dramas. And this fellow had rejected this preacher. So all of a sudden, the preacher now, I think he sent dogs after the preacher. That's why it's good to have both guys sometimes, you know. So the preacher, <laughs> I don't know, quote me anyway, come on. The preacher leaves, so he begins to have a second thought. He he, why have I not listened to this guy? And then the angel said, no, 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 no. That time is over now. Ah. He said, no, 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 no. I only waited for that last opportunity. I just put the video up. Nonsense. This is the devil. What last opportunity? A guy on the tree. He said, Lord, Remember me, he said two things. He said, we are suffering for our sins. This, this man is the Lamb of God. He who knew no sin. He said, remember me. Jesus said, all right, four steps. Number one. Are you ready? Time is going. I'm about to say it's finished though. <laughs> <laughs> he said, number one, accept. Confess. Have you heard membership class? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, ah, Eloy, Eloy, I'm going, you know, Eloy, Eloy. He said, I say unto you today, is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. In the day of salvation, anybody and everybody can be saved. Hallelujah. Because Jesus paid for that day to be ours for the whole world. But there's a day of judgment where Jesus will immerse men in the judgment. We are not to preach that because this is not the day. Just that we are not to preach rapture. We are to preach the first coming, not the second coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Rapture is not a message of salvation. It is the first coming that is a message of salvation. Praise the Lord. It is if thou shalt confess with your mouth that Jesus is coming soon. And believe with your heart that he will come in the twinkle of an eye. Thou shalt be saved. Uh-uh. God raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Not God sent him from heaven. God raised him from the dead. And thou shalt be saved. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So I asked him, he said, you don't preach much of the, go- of, of, of the rapture. I said, because I preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Say that. Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 now tells us about the baptism of fire. And the new covenant is silent. The epistles are silent on it because that's not our day. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Better adjust your seat. Because we're going some distance. Amen. Amen. This is camp meeting. Hallelujah. Verse 5. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. 
Sin is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed. When? When it shall be? Watch this. From heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on who? Them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall be punished? Now this is the fire. In case you're thinking about matchstick, gas. It says, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction, banishment now, from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. See that? So the day of vengeance is not now. The day of vengeance will only happen after the rapture of the church. So God is not taking out anything. Listen to this. You need to be careful of what you call vengeance. That vengeance is not because of people's individual sins. It's because of unbelief. Because Jesus has been punished for sins. People that go to hell, go to hell because of unbelief. Those who believe not the gospel. Hear me. The greatest sin in the world that Jesus could not pay for is a sin of unbelief. His blood did not cover it. That's why he said, every sin that a man commits... Okay, the Son of Man shall be forgiven him, any sin. He said, but the blasphemy that is to resist and to oppose the Holy Spirit. Now, blasphemy, let me tell you what blasphemy is. Blasphemy is to oppose a message or a messenger. The Holy Spirit's message is who? What exactly? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. So what's that blasphemy? To resist that message. He said, that cannot be forgiven. Not in this age or in that which is to come. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying here? So, at that day, God's vengeance will come on them that did not believe the gospel of Christ. His anger on sins had been vested on Jesus. But on unbelief, it will be vested on individuals that did not believe in the punishment of Jesus. That is a vengeance of the Lord. Those that believe not. Mark 16, 15, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be condemned. Are you getting this? Are you following this? So, don't get angry when people are worshiping idols and say, hey, hey, hey. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be Oh God arise. What are you waiting for? And his enemies be scattered. Oh God arise. See? See? You all lose your life. Abba. Jesus paid for their sin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You just preach the gospel. Christ died for your sins, you know. You know, he was buried for you. You know, really, Jesus took responsibility for all the sins you have ever committed and you will ever commit. Yeah, that's the good news. Praise God. But when you refuse to believe that, you take responsibility. And then you go to hell. I've never been there before. I was there by faith in Christ. Praise God. And I came out, amen, alive with Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We'll get to that too. Come on, let's go on. So, hear this. He bore sins. So, the vengeance is after the rapture. Watch this now. Is it only for unbelievers? No. Also for believers. There is judgment for believers, but not in the day of salvation. That judgment is not for the person of the believer who has been saved. It's for the works. 
Hallelujah. It's for the works. Now, I'll show you that in a moment. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It's for the works. You know, Paul in 1 Corinthians 9.27 says, I, 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 I put my body under, I bring it under subjection, lest having preached the gospel unto others, I myself become a castaway. And I've had people say, man, you know, I was in the minister's conference, say, man of the hold your head, yeah, I'm not preaching like this, man, don't go to where I am, man. And I, say, I just be like this. And I have one style I use when I'm with people and they are praying prayers of unbelief. I just speak in tongues. So they, are, they think I'm saying amen. When I say, may God deliver you, I say, mama, oh. So they think I'm saying amen, I say, mama, Because how can I, Bible says for him that knows what is right, does not do to him, you see. How can I hold my head? For what? Hold your head. Fire! Amen. And so, they said, may I not be a castaway in Jesus' name? In just illiteracy again. Paul was talking about a race. That when you run a race, you receive a reward. Now, he says, if you don't run according to the rules, you will not receive the reward. Are you following me? Salvation is not a reward of a race. The reward refers to, at the end of your life, your ministry. Because Jesus gave us a ministry. When you don't fulfill the ministry, you will lose your reward, not lose your salvation. 1 Corinthians 9.27. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the same thing that Paul says. Are you following this, guys? Come on, guys. Are you following this? All right. It says here, verse 11, For other foundation can no man lay except that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ, verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, a stubble, every man's what? Someone say work. Say again, work. Good. Shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by what? Fire. It shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If a man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet as by fire. So a man's works may not be saved. <laughs> there are Christians today who have unsaved works. You know. But it says the work shall be saved, shall be burn and judge and destroy but the man shall yet be saved praise god now in second corinthians chapter 5 paul mentions that verse 10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ the word judgment seat is the word bima the word bima seat is you know when you raise a podium you watch who's in bold now, is where you receive reward. He said, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. So at the judgment seat of God, Christ, we're going to have bad folks, bad Christians. At the judgment seat of Christ, oh no, so that was the white throne judgment, no. The white throne judgment is Jesus and his saints judging the world. The, white, the judgment seat of Christ is family matter. Do you understand that? That's family matter. Look at 1 Corinthians 6, so you understand what I just said now. 1 Corinthians 6. The believer and the unbeliever will not have the same room where they are judged together. We have since left that room forever. There is no meeting point again. Oh, what are they? Uh, uh, oh, my darling Jesus, that great day is coming. That great day is coming. All men shall die before the throne of God and give a kind of themselves. But when we fellowship, I will stand, you will stand. My father, I say my father because my father had myself, we had battles about my Christian faith. So I say, my father will stand, my mother will stand, all men shall stand. Was the day we said, our principal will stand. <laughs> what? 
How men shall stand before the throne of God and give account of themselves. Oh my darling Jesus. <laughs> For your work is set on fire, you will be my cup. So you know. <laughs> so you know. You will be my pillar. Guide me, oh Lord. Rock of me. Rock of, rock of, rock of. You are not a serious person. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. Dare any of you having a matter against another, go to the Lord before the unjust and not before saints. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? How about that? Do you not know what you think is the right hand of God about? It's a throne of judgment. We are seated there in Christ. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you. Are you still out there? So the judgment seat of Christ is family matter. He says, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Let us read verse 3 together. Let's go. Know ye not that you shall judge angels. All them angels shall be judged by the church. No, he's talking to very, very superior believers. No, he called them carnal Christians. Are you happy, man? Yeah, mm, huh? So I'm qualified to join. You know. <laughs> hey, I love you, brother. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So the fire that burns, you know, so let me ask you, are your works physical, literal? If you, for instance, goodness. Where is goodness? Then one box is coming. So why do you think the fire is also literal? Amen? If you say the fire shall burn the works. So I've done ministry. I've, been, I've endured for the gospel. Say, where is it? It's coming soon. You know portmanteau. What mantle is coming? Those are endurance. Yeah, yeah. Let's test it. Fire. Yeah, that fire is not strong enough. I make hard kerosene. No, no, no. Put petrol. Pa! The word fire is actually separation. So you will not be in heaven with anything. But those people, folks who have works that are eternal, things that are eternal will abide. Amen. So there's going to be a ranking in heaven. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be a ranking. Because when Jesus talks about reward, in the parable, he talks about position. Praise God. There's going to be a ranking in heaven. Amen. But don't worry, you are already saved. Hallelujah. It means to be judged. To be tested. When it is tested, it stays. It's eternal. Okay? If it's tested and is destroyed, it means it's temporal. The unbeliever will be judged. The believer's works will be judged. The believer has been saved. But it will, they are now the works of salvation. If he doesn't produce the works of salvation, whatever he does will be destroyed. But when he produces the works of salvation, amen, those works abide eternally. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying here? Okay, good. So, the baptism of fire cannot happen at this time. It will happen after this dispensation. Praise God. Is that very clear? Baptism of fire, that is judgment. We are not in the day of judgment. What day are we in? The day of salvation. The day of favor. The day of acceptance. The day of grace. The day of mercy. Hallelujah. That's the day we are in right now. Say so we're in the day of salvation. Say so we're in the day of salvation. Thank you. So the Passover, take care of this now, takes judgment from us and puts the judgment on the Passover lamb. Same way, Exodus 12 and 13. The Passover, Jesus is our Passover, who takes judgment from us and takes judgment on himself. So all the punishment has been put 
on Jesus. That is why he is called our Passover. It is judgment shifted. Judgment lifted. Jesus is the gift of no condemnation. I'll take that again. Jesus is the gift of no condemnation. In Christ, there is no condemnation. Because Jesus has paid for sin. Jesus offered himself as the sacrifice. Listen now. He is the perfect sacrifice for sin. Once and for all time. Glory to God. So who is a preacher of the gospel? A preacher of the gospel is one who preaches the year, the, the acceptable year of the Lord. A preacher of the gospel announces the favor of God. A preacher of the gospel does not preach judgment. A preacher of the gospel does not preach vengeance. A preacher of the gospel does not preach 666. You hear about it before? A preacher of the gospel does not preach Obama Antichrist. A preacher of the gospel does not bother himself about the healthcare system and some numbers and numbers. He's too busy with the three days. Because he's investigating. Hallelujah. You'll busy yourself with stuff like that. So we're in the days of internet frenzy and people just pick things off anywhere. And you're not spending time with the Bible. Some are so busy on Facebook, we don't know when they ever study and pray. Hallelujah. So a preacher of the gospel is someone who understands, preaches, believes what Jesus has done. There is no condemnation or judgment in the gospel. The judgment of the gospel is when you do not believe the gospel. And you know something? Because we're in the day of salvation, people have numerous opportunities to still accept it. How many of you received the gospel the very first time you heard it? I don't lie, now you're born again, don't lie, come on. Many of us when what? What? We, we didn't like it. And God didn't say, one more chance. And there was one fellow that wrote a book years ago, um, Deliver from the Power of God. Sorry, Power of Darkness, remember? That book was more from the power of God than from darkness. And, uh, the book was so awful. These are times of mighty manifestations. These are seasons of glorious manifestations. For more information about the Saints Community, visit www.thesaintscommunity.com.